Kathleen and all of our AFC and family. It's great to be with you and be able to spend a little bit of time with you. Um, I'm Sandy Wallace. My husband Don and I pastor Redlands Christian Center in Redlands, California. And we've been a part of the AFCM family for goodness over 20 years now. And it's been such a blessing to us to all that's been shared by Jim and Kathleen and the other ministers and ministries that have poured into our lives over the years. Uh, it's just been a tremendous blessing for us. We were recently able to be a part of the overnighter with the sparrows up in the Pismo Beach area and Desi and her daughter were able to come um, and uh, Brother Jim was able to zoom in with us and share the Word of God. So it was a very rich time and such a, a good thing to be able to get back together again after being separated for the uh, last couple of years due to the um, COVID virus and all that went on with that. And it's just great to be part of the family and being knitted back together. So special greetings to all of those uh, that we were able to spend some time with during that. But I do have a word uh, over the next few minutes to share with you. And, and I mean, literally a word. Uh, someone shared with me, Holy Spirit deals with me um, in prayer by, by giving me words. And I go and I study out these words and I get this bigger picture and Holy Spirit uh, ministers to me. And so recently, uh, someone sent me this word out of the New Testament, and it's the Greek word pleroma, P-L-E-R-O-M-A. And it means the fullness of divine excellencies and powers. When I looked it up and began to study it out, out of the Strong's Dictionary, I'm just going to read you a few of the definitions. It means completion. What fills, as in contents or supplement, uh, what is filled, as in a container, a performance period, which is put in to fill up, a piece that filled up fulfilling, full, and fullness. And as I studied it out a little bit further out of um, the Thayer's Greek lexicon, and I'd like to read you a few things to, again, amplify the understanding of what this word pleroma means. And it says, that which has been filled. And it gave an example as a ship, inasmuch as it is filled, manned with sailors, rowers, and soldiers, freight, merchandise, and then it gives a reference um, out of the Thayer's Greek lexicon in the New Testament, the body of believers as that which is filled with the presence, power, agency, riches of God and of Christ. That which fills or with which a thing is filled. Again, completeness or fullness of time. Fullness, abundance, fulfilling, keeping. And I'm very much interested in studying in times, prophetic words, um, what's happening as, as the fullness of the age is coming to pass. And so this really got me interested in, in studying out this word and, and why this word was brought to me. And so there was another reference that um, gave all the, the times that this word was used in the New Testament. And it says this word is used 17 times in the New Testament. And I began to scroll down through the scripture references and what really caught my eye in terms of what Holy Spirit was trying to tell me through this word is that it was uh, there were four references out of the books of book of uh, Ephesians and recently Holy Spirit has had me go back to the Pauline prayers out of Ephesians 1 17 through 23 and Ephesians 3 14 through 21 of daily one of the first things that I do is go and quote those portions of scriptures and excuse me speak those over me over our church over our family and loved ones. And so when I saw that reference out of Ephesians, I began to see, okay, Holy Spirit has a reason that this word is being brought to me. And particularly out of uh, Ephesians 1, 23, and I'm gonna read those to you, Ephesians 1, 22 and 23, it talks about where God hath put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness, the pleroma of him that filleth all in all. And the other scripture, one of the other scripture references of the 17 times this is used in the New Testament is out of uh, Ephesians 3, and I'm going to read 17 through 19. It says that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that we, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height, and to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that we might be filled with all the fullness of God. And of course, we're, we know we're coming into the fullness of time. We're coming into the end of this dis dispensation 
of the 6,000 years that God has given us on his calendar before the church is raptured out and before we go into the, the seventh uh, day or the thousand years of a millennial reign of Christ. So all of these things we prophetically understand, but that we're at the end of the age and getting ready to do that. And one of the things, of course, we see naturally manifesting is that spirit of Antichrist, that lawless spirit that's coming into filling the earth as the uh, embodiment of the Antichrist is going to come as soon as what? As soon as the church is raptured out and that we, the church, the body of Christ that's being referred to out of the book of Ephesians, that as God is filling us with his all in all, so is Satan trying to fill the earth with this Antichrist spirit. But God has the church in place and our role and responsibility out of the book of Thessalonians is to restrain that Antichrist spirit until it's time for that fullness to manifest when the church is raptured out. So this particularly interested me because um, as, as I'm pressing into moving into this end time anointing, the great awakening that God is, is moving in the earth and, and the salvation and the harvest of souls that we're believing God for, we're increasing in our anointings. We're increasing in the discernment and we are again opening up to move in the gifts of the Spirit, which quite frankly, I'm sure you all have realized there hasn't been much manifestations in the church, in the body of Christ. There's been pockets of, of revival and things going on, but we haven't been moving in the gifts of the Spirit back in the times that we used to. And I believe God is bringing that out. So in this word pleroma, that God is filling, and of course, we are familiar with the scripture that as in the days of Noah, so shall it be when the Son of Man returns again. So I was particularly interested in, in this definition that, that this pleroma that is, is mentioned, it is God filling just as a ship is being filled with the journey of all the supplies that are needed for that journey. Because once you're on that ship, it's not like you can go to the corner to the 7-Eleven and get what you have need of, a stop at the Walmart or whatever to resupply. No, you plan and you fill what is needed for the journey. And so I began to see this picture of what Holy Spirit is doing in us. It's not about us. It's about us opening ourselves to letting God take out of us and us putting down those things which weighed us down and letting Holy Spirit fill us with the fullness of God. And that is a process of us simply yielding to him in a greater measure, not being burdened down with the things of this world, not being burdened down with, with the politics, with, with what the craziness that's going on, but looking unto God, the author and the finisher of our faith, and letting him by Holy Spirit fill us. It's him who's completing the good work in us that he has already began. And so just as Noah, in the days that God told him to go out and begin to build, and that God would fill the ark. God kept his part. He filled the ark. Noah put his hand to the work that God called him to, and God did the filling. God is bringing his anointing. And so as much as we are all moving in uncharted territories these days where we can't plan our schedules, we can't concretely say we're going to do this or going to do this because things are changing rapidly. Um, food chain supplies are, are constantly in, in a state of movement. Um, circumstances, our, our politics, our government system is unable to manage things. But God, God has all this under control. And so I'm learning more and more to just yield myself because frankly, I'm a type A person. I like control. I like order. I like organization. And all those things that I've been accustomed to, I'm just saying, God, I lift up my hands to you. I'm going to let you order my days. Because after all, aren't the steps of the earth of the righteous ordered by God, we need to let him order us. We need to let him fill us. So this word that I wanna share with you is just an encouragement to let go and to let God, because God is the one who brings the anointing. We can do nothing in and of ourselves to change the circumstances of what's going on in this world, but by faith, prayer, supplication, intercessions, moving with the word of God, allowing Holy Spirit to fill us in his all and all and allowing us to just empty ourselves of the weights and concerns of the world and just say, God, here we are. We are the body of Christ. We do carry the government on our shoulders, but we are 
yielded to our head, the Lord Jesus Christ. So let him order your steps. Let him fill you today and trust in him that he is moving and he's bringing his gifts and his callings forth. He's bringing the, the fullness of the body of Christ as we learn to move, walk in love, bless one another, stay connected to one another through the AFCM family and all of the connections that God has blessed Jim and Kathleen with bringing us together in this body of Christ and to allow Holy Spirit to move us into the higher heights. Greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. So I just trust today that as we're going on this last final journey in these end times, that we're getting our ships out on the water, we're gonna go into the deep, and God is filling us with everything that we have need of for this journey. We don't have to worry about any lack, about any empty shelves, about the price of gasoline, and even this, these situations with the politics, with, with Roe v. Wade and all that's going on. We trust God and we speak his word that there is liberty and justice for all in Christ. We are free. Whom the Son sets free is free indeed. And our God provides us and fills us with everything that we have need of. So I just want to speak blessing over you and just encourage you as you go forth in, in Christ in your ministry as the anointing of God increases in you. And together we release all the gifts that God has called us to. So I love you. Thank you, AFCM, for all that you've done and all that you're doing in the earth. And I'm just so thankful to be a part of this wonderful work and move of God through AFCM Ministries. Love you all. Blessing.